Spencer Cox, governor of the great state of Utah, been very involved with the Rural Online Initiative from its inception, and uh, I'm, I'm one of its biggest cheerleaders and fans. Well, the, the Rural Online Initiative is, is one of the best uh, rural economic development uh, initiatives that we've done in the history of the state of Utah. I, I, I firmly believe that. You know, I, t I talked to my dad who was the mayor of our small town when I was a kid and he kind of joked about um, the flavor of the day when it comes to rural economic development and how many things they've gotten wrong and you know we try something and it doesn't work so it wasn't a real bottom-up approach. The Rural Online Initiative is different because we're investing in people. Um, we're investing in them. Uh, the infrastructure broadband is, is, is not ubiquitously available, but it's, it's, we have some of the best broadband in rural Utah, a anywhere in the nation, a anywhere in rural America. And we're adding more rural broadband every day. And so that's the, the infrastructure's there. And now people can, can have, you, know, you don't need a freeway. You don't need a, a train. Um, you, you can, if you're in one of these towns like Fairview that got bypassed by I-15, um, now you have an, an information highway, super highway that allows you to participate in the global economy. Um, but it's, it's a unique skill set, and, and people need to learn how to take advantage of the tools that are out there. And that's what's missing, and, and so the Rural Online Initiative gives anyone the opportunity to learn how to take advantage of those tools and how to do it from their, their, their living room. And, and that's, uh, that's, that's powerful, and we've already seen uh, that it's working. We just need more of it. Well, you know, re remote work is something that I've been, I've been a fan of for a long, long time. Uh, before I was uh, lieutenant governor, uh, I, I ran a rural telecommunications company. And so getting broadband out to rural areas is what I did. And I, I just, I believed in the power of remote work. And I, I was told that it, it just couldn't work, that, that, that you know, it just it wasn't feasible. And then uh, about uh, a couple years ago, I, I started pushing then Governor Herbert to let me try a, a project with, with state workers to let them work from home and, uh, and 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 I started that and it worked better than we expected we were shocked by the results people loved it which didn't surprise us and they were happier which didn't surprise us but their their work productivity went up significantly and so I, I really started pushing this out to the private sector because we didn't have opportunities um, in in rural Utah uh, there were I didn't know anyone in Fairview who was working remotely and uh, and then the pandemic hit and I became one of those remote workers. I, I started working from home multiple days a week, um, dealing with the pandemic, but everybody was remote. And so it made sense. I could do it in Fairview. We had fiber to my house. Um, I could do it as well there as, as anywhere else. My speeds were better than in you know downtown Salt Lake City, so why not? And, uh, and, and now I think people have caught the vision that, that it, it is possible. And now I do know people in Fairview who are working remotely, and uh, it's cool to see them getting job opportunities that they never would have had. This is one of the frustrating things that I've, I've had to fight um, as, as Lieutenant Governor now as Governor, was this, this idea that um, there's no talent in, in rural Utah. It's just not true. Um, and if there is any truth to it, it's only true because the talent has no choice and has to go somewhere else. And that's where I, I talk often about, my, my dad always said growing up, and I didn't understand it, he said um, at the time, he said, our best crop is our kids. And, and I got that part, and, and, but, but he always said, he said, and then we export our best crop. And, uh, and so we're exporting our kids. And so too many talented people who want to be there, who, who could live there, can't because they don't have the opportunities. So given the opportunities, they would stay. Given the opportunities, they would move back. And, and there are people there doing, they're, they're underemployed now because they want to live there. Um, they're either commuting to the Wasatch Front and living there, or they're living there and doing something that they wouldn't otherwise do. They have the, the education background and the talent to do something else. They just don't have an opportunity. It's worth the sacrifice to stay there. But uh, I, I tell companies all the time who are having a hard time finding people that there is a wealth of talent out there if they're just willing to go out to rural Utah.
you know, one of the, one of the things that was really important to me uh, was to focus on on remote work as a state. We that that trial project that that we did was so successful that uh, I, I convinced Governor Herbert to have a goal of, of 2,500 people working from home uh, by the end of last year. And uh, well, then the pandemic hit, and we far exceeded that 2,500 number. But what we've decided is that that we want to keep that. We we want to keep it in every um, every job, every agency that they can. I mean, there are some where you can't work from home, but if you can, we want to make that available. It's, it's helping in so many ways. It's helping us with recruiting. Um, it's, it's helping us, uh, of course, with rural, because now people can apply for jobs that couldn't apply for those jobs before. Again, it's helping with flexibility. We've got more, more women who can now participate in the, in the workforce who couldn't before, who can help their families in tremendous ways and still be there for their kids when they, when they come home from school, which is so important. So there are so many wins that are coming from remote work, and uh, we, we believe that Utah can be a leader nationally in uh, remote work the right way. There will always be people who want to get out of the uh, the big city, who want to get out of the, you know just the the noise and, and the pressure. It, it's not for everyone, right? Rural Utah is not for everyone. I say that all the time. For many people, it's a great place to visit, but you could never live there. Uh, but for others who who thrive in that environment and want that, um, that that's going to be true anywhere in this country. And uh, and, and again, I, I just think showing. Um, the power of remote work um, in, in improving the workforce uh, can, uh, can, can help, again, it, it can help the economy, it can help people in their personal lives, it can help them with their families, and uh, that's something that translates uh, uh, across cultures and, and across states. It's different for everyone. Um, for many of us, it's because that's where we're from. It's part of who we are. Um, our roots are there. So I hear it all the time. I hear people come to me and say, you know, I'm so jealous that you got to move back, that you got to the, I wanted to do that, but I, I couldn't. Um, for other people, it's, uh, it's just a different way of life. They, they love the outdoors. Now we have people coming from other states who found out, by the way, that now they can work anywhere they want. And uh, they want to live in rural Utah and enjoy, walk out their front door, get on their mountain bike and just go, you know, go on a hike. Uh, just have that, uh, they, they want horses. They want, you know, they, they want the life that it brings and now that uh, you know that now that Amazon can deliver to your front door, you don't have to have a mall right next door. Uh, you, you, you don't lose the inconveniences that you may have had before, but you get all of the benefits. Well, th there's no question that Utah has been recognized um, over the past few years. We've been discovered. Um, some people think that's great. Some people think it's not that great. But more and more people are coming here. Our tourism industry is just booming. And I hear it all the time. Like, I would love to live here. People come and visit. And then they start saying, well, I, you know, I could live here. And so that's, that's happening for sure. And uh, I think that's driving some of it. We're seeing it in Park City and, and, and some other places. But, but all across Utah, you know, we've, we've got some, some neighbors who, uh, who lived, raised their family in New York. They had ties to Utah. They came back uh, to teach at, uh, at one of the universities here. Then they bought a little place in, in Fairview. Uh, then they, they would come down on weekends. And then they just decided, what are we doing? We love it here. We want to live here full time. And, and that's, that's what's impacted them. That, that first taste of Utah is visiting the Mighty Five, our national parks, our state parks, skiing, and then deciding, hey, I, I want to live here.